Welcome to the Financing Simplified Podcast with Anthony Venuto. If you're looking for answers to your financial questions, let Anthony and his network of friends and associates answer regular questions that regular people have about their money. Thanks for tuning in. It's time to start simplifying your finances. Welcome back to our Financing Simplified Podcast, where we are going to simplify uh, a couple things here this week, and I'm really honored to have our next guest. I think it's really important uh, for a lot of our viewers out there to understand the importance of a home inspector. And who else better than to explain to us and have a conversation about home inspection than Joe? Joe, welcome. Thanks Thank for you. coming. Thank you, Anthony. I'm gonna, you know, just tell us a little bit about yourself. Tell us a little bit about your background, how long you've been doing it. You know, what things uh, make home inspection fun for you, Joe? <laughs> um, thank you for having me, Anthony. Um, a little bit of background, uh, construction, uh, building operations, stuff like that was my background. I've been a home inspector now for about uh, 16 to 17 years with Lighthouse Inspections. And uh, I'm certified through NACHI, which is the North American Certified Home Inspectors Association. So I have my annual dues. I get certified every couple of years. I think the importance of a home inspection is something we advocate from our area. So you touched on a few things. was was nice. Yes. Every year, two years, we have to continue our education to be on top of the uh, what's happening, what's changing. What the standards are. Did it change? Right? Absolutely. Building standards. Yeah. That's 100% correct. And, you know, you're looking at it going from a lot of our clients' perspectives, there was that period of time where, you know, clients were going into these uh, firm offers, you know, and they couldn't put certain conditions in. We're telling our clients, look, home inspection, if you're moving from, let's say, a condo into a home, there's so much more that you need to know. Right. It's not just about, uh, you know, the windows that are covered by the maintenance fees. Now you have your own windows, potentially you have your own basement, your garage. And, you know, there's a lot of things that clients or uh, potential home buyers should be aware of. So what are some of the things that you would suggest to like first time home buyers, why they need an inspection? Absolutely. So with a home inspection, whether it be a condo or a detached home, a semi, a townhouse, um, it's everything from the exterior. It's the envelope, roofing, foundation windows, brickwork, stucco, stuff like that. And then moving inside, you're going to be educated on the HVAC system, which is the heating and air conditioning, the electrical, the plumbing, the um, attic installation, our value. And then with that report, there'll be a lot of recommendations for improvement, maintenance tip, seasonal stuff, just to maintain it, keep it up to a standard, keep it up to a par, right? Just like your car, you change your oil, you rotate the tires, same with the home. Turn off your garden hose bibs in the winter time. Change the filters. You got an HRV unit. Maintain caulking, downspouts, all the good stuff. You're adding value. I think yeah. it's important, especially for a lot of uh, new homeowners because they don't they don't know that stuff. Like it's like a checklist. We, we when we do a transaction, we give them a checklist of things that they need to do. Mm-hmm. And on the home inspection front, especially for a lot of these individuals, they don't know. Maybe oh, better make sure to turn off uh, those hose bibs that yeah. are connected outside. You just want to freeze the line, yeah. for example. It, it's it's actually interesting. Like coming from a European background, we sort of understood some of these things, yeah. right? Because we learned it firsthand. But some some individuals don't have that yeah. ability, right? They may have moved from that condo to a home, uh, not understanding, you know, how often to change the furnace filter. Yeah, uh, that's that's a huge one too. I, I see a lot of times people are like, "Oh, how often should I change my furnace filter?" But so, I, yeah. but I do need to say one thing. During COVID, when there was this big craze that oh let's just sell for a hundred, two hundred, three hundred thousand dollars over asking, and don't get a home, home inspector. Inspection. Yeah, you got to tell us hmm. how in the world is that even something that should have been allowed? <laughs> well, I, I can't speak on the real estate side of things and how the market dictates uh, what warrants an inspection or not, um, because that's out of my control. When my phone rings, I jump. Mm-hmm. I'm very fortunate. I got great clientele and great repeat clients, investors, and stuff like that. The unfortunate thing during those COVID times actually was the best and the busiest three, three and a half years of my career as a home inspector. The market just went through the roof. A large, a large number of the larger home inspecting companies out there shut their doors. But our business continued on. The real estate just blew up. So a lot of agents were in a jam and I was still working under proper regulations and guidelines and stuff like that to protect everybody. Um, But a lot of my agents were very proactive with pre-list inspections. Mm -hmm. So they did an inspection with their sellers. So they're already educated on knowing what is wrong with the home 
how to improve in certain areas and then they'll correct it or they'll price the home accordingly. So any offer that comes through that door is now non-negotiable. It, it is what it is. We know it has asbestos. We know it has mold in the attic. We know that foundation crack is leaking. We know it's got aluminum wire, knob and tube. Now it's black and white. There's my report. This is what it is, right? And they were still going through the roof. That was overwhelming sometimes. That definitely was a crazy time, Joe. I know like we were always telling our clients like already they're going in with this expectation that they have to go in and buy firms. Almost sight unseen. Like literally in some cases it was like, yeah, I got to put the offer in and then go see the house. Yeah. Right. And then the home inspection is like, I don't think in this society we should have allowed that to happen. I really don't think, especially because the amount of pressure that's put on that homeowner to go in there and purchase a home. Uh, if they don't know the deficiencies, they don't know how to budget properly. And that's the re one reason why we always advise our clients say, look, whether you're selling your home, get a home inspection so that yeah. you, as, as you mentioned, hundred percent, you know what your deficiencies are. So you already can price accordingly, fix those problems to get top dollar or two, the home inspector, the person coming into the home actually knows how to budget accordingly. Like how, basic, how strict are you on your inspections? I'm very disciplined. And I got no shame in saying right from wrong. This is a must, right? But the good thing is it's, a, it's all about presentation. Um, I've been doing good. I, I do two to three inspections a day, seven days a week. Right now I'm booked till next Friday. So I turn away inspections. It's all about presentation and how you word it to those clients. Their first time home buyers saved up enough money to buy their very first dream home. Then they hire a person like me to either burst their bubble, shatter their dreams, or pat them on the back and say, you got a, you got a good home here. And what I do is I prioritize what's important based on what your budget is. So if the house is worth $100 and you have a $100 budget to play with after the purchase, if 50, 75 bucks goes right to the maintenance and upkeep and repairs, then I believe it might not be the home for you. But if only $25 goes to repairs and maintenance and upkeep and you still have 75 bucks in your pocket, it's a good purchase. But in that sense, right? you can't disclose that to the buyer or seller. You have to disclose that to the realtor, correct? No. Like, so no. Th if, if the realtor refers me, just because he or she refers me, I don't work for them. No. I work for the buyer. And again, my, my responsibility is to them. And again, I educate, I don't discourage. I'll never deter anybody from making a purchase because once you buy four walls and a piece of grass, you're in the market, you know, sky's the limit after that. Right. But if it, the repairs become overwhelming and the costs become overwhelming, then again, I, I want to sleep at night. I, I fully disclose. So if that attic is full of mold, yeah, it's going to be remediated mm -hmm. based on your budget. Do right? you do you also um, specialize in homes, condos, apartments? Uh, what? How far does your knowledge go? Uh, it goes up to uh, small commercial businesses. It goes into condo apartments, uh, multi units, um, detached homes, uh, estate homes. Uh, I've done homes that are 25, 27,000 square feet, and I've done roll townhouses that are barely six hundred uh, square feet. I do century homes, which I specialize in. I, I get a real kick out of century homes because of <laughs> the means of construction and you also the did, you didn't mention big corporations, big warehouses, million dollar, million square foot warehouses. Do you do that? Uh, to certain levels, if it's like a just a, a commercial building, I don't I don't inspect. Let's say equipment like machinery stuff like that. I don't do the other stage of inspections for soil testings and stuff like that. That's beyond my scope. Uh, septic and well inspections, I don't Those get involved. Separate, usually. Yeah, I don't get involved with Port that because stuff. my agent goes, why don't you just do the whole package? I go, well, because I got other clients I got to service. So if I'm at a house for four to five hours, then I'm saying no to other work. So I'll leave those areas of evaluation to the professionals and I'll just do the structure. I agree. You don't want to wear too many hats in an industry, no, right? You no. just want to be able to do one thing really, really well and deliver yeah. uh, what the clients expect of you. It's a little different than us. No. I know the basics, yeah. like right from wrong. I know what, you know, how to have a conversation regarding its use and how to maintain it and what to look for, but I can't put my stamp on it. Right? Absolutely. So.
But I, I think what you touched on, like when you were talking about that, the budgeting, I think it's really, it's really something that's important to think about as a first time homebuyer for our viewers and listeners out there. Uh, a lot of people sometimes say, well, what's the value that I get in a home inspection, right? Because every, everyone's buying this home. It's, it's, it's a really important conversation. You're spending, let's say, hundreds of thousands of dollars to purchase this home. You're going to put yourself in a mortgage for 25 or 30 years. Mm -hmm. uh, and now you're potentially worried about a couple of hundred dollars that's yeah. going to give you a, an, a, an aerial view or a good synopsis on the deficiencies in your house yeah. to help you optimize it, right? Yeah. Like how many times, are, like I said, silly things like caulking on the window, uh, yeah. you know, plumbing concerns, you know, how many, I always tell people, I say, get your house checked because sometimes you don't even hear the water running. Yeah. Wait till you get to the water bill. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. But see, that's how I educate the clients. So... When you're in a home that's vacant and the family's not living there or not present for the inspection and no taps are running in the home, I always tell the family, this is your water meter. If you see that little dial spinning and you know nothing's running in the house, there's something leaking, whether it be at a toilet, a faucet, a, a, a bathtub, you never know. Your garden hose outside. Those are little clues to look for. Cocking on window, that's every house. Every house has uh, caulking uh, that's needed. To me, that's just basic conversation, this regular chatter. Um, it's the main things that I focus on too, how, right? How much has the droning aspect changed your inspection? Because I've noticed now that a lot more inspectors are starting to use the drone to see the roof. Yeah. Why do you use it and how does it benefit your job? <laughs> It benefits my job because uh, I'm getting too old to climb roofs. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Theoretically, my insurance doesn't even allow us to climb roofs here in uh, Canada. Um, but you do roof edge with the ladder. You can sometimes look out from, let's say, a second floor window. If they're low pitch roofs and the elements and the climate dictates it's safe to walk, I'll walk it. But if it's those high pitch roofs, like when you see a new construction, if it's a flat roof, I pull out the drone. And uh, you get a bird's eye view. I've gotten comfortable with it now that I can get within a foot or two of a, of a specific area, whether it be chimney flashing, uh, the scuppers on flat roofs, uh, roof vents, stuff like that. And those are not physically seen to the eye. Now, when it comes to winter conditions, I'm sorry, uh, all bets are off. I can't walk it, and I, it's no point in flying the drone because no one can see it. Over the snow, yeah. Over the snow. But... As a home inspector, you look for clues within the attic cavity, if it has it on flat roofs. Um, if there's any indication that, that there is possibly a concern going on from the exterior that's causing something within, right? And then within my report and photographs that I take, that's how I describe it to the client. Further evaluation when weather permits, right? Understood. Yeah. No, definitely, definitely really important uh, to look at. And I think another thing that goes under the radar is as I said, the, the windows, I, I know we've had a couple clients that went through the home inspection and, you know, they're like, how does the home inspector, and they're asking me the question, and I really don't know, as I said, talk to your home inspector. Like, how do you know the condition of a furnace, like uh, the condition of an air conditioner? Like, are you pulling off those those sleeves, literally taking a deep dive into that? Yeah, so with uh, furnaces, I take off the cover plate, absolutely. I look within, I look at the, the, the blower motor, the... Um, the flues, right? The condensation lines, the exhaust venting um, with electrical panels. I'll take the cover off if it's safe to do so. Air conditioners, that's another topic where come the winter season, you can't test them, right? They're, they're filled with ice and snow. You can do damage, right? The furnace is in full swing. So those are the limitations when it comes to seasonal inspections, right? But otherwise, you do get a pure evaluation of every product or HVAC system within a home. And when you're looking at the also the said the outside exterior and stuff like that, are you? I mean, it's to, to most people they don't understand grading, mm -hmm. uh, but they should look at their situation. If they, especially they have landscaping, is the water? Uh, yeah. where, where's the water sloping? Yeah, yeah. You want to make sure that there's natural swells within the property. If you're buying new construction, once the grading is finished and they lay the saw down, then they'll have the grading accordingly. It's when families get in there and start doing landscaping and patios and pads and stuff like that. That's where, let's say, lack of professionalism or effort comes into play, which becomes a negative effect. Most homes now, new construction homes, is going to have a concrete foundation. 
but years ago it was a block foundation, a brick foundation, a stone foundation. Mm -hmm. And when you're talking about clay weeping tiles and grading and vegetation or roots from an oak tree that's already 200 years of age, it has a negative effect on, on any home. So this is where you educate the client on how to prioritize for prevention and upkeep. So Joe, I know there's a lot of viewers out there, you know, as the, the market goes into hibernation right now, it's a little slower, obviously, but there's a lot of pent up demand. And there's a lot of people that are looking to get educated on the process, just like they have to interview a realtor, they interview a mortgage broker. How do you, how would you suggest, or what should a client, a potential home buyer look at when they're trying to pick the right home inspector? Good question. Uh, I, I wish I could understand what goes through people's heads when they're choosing an individual for a specific job and stuff like that. But referrals, um, word of mouth, uh, talking to past clients, uh, repeat clients. That's how I'm getting all my business right now is from referrals, whether it be from agents, mortgage brokers, sometimes home appraisers. Um, it's building that trust. Once you have that trust and they know how Joe works, I'm gold, right? And, and, and that's the thing, I've been doing this for so long that I build up a reputation and a trust factor with all my clients and repeat clients that there's that comfort level. So it's not like I'm talking to a business associate or, or just a, a transaction, you become like a friend, right? So you're part of this inner circle where you build up that relationship and it's a lot easier to, let's say, present things and disclose things with people. No, I agree 100%. Through the whole journey, we always advocate, you know, as a, as a client looking to buy a home, you need a good mortgage professional lawyer, you need a realtor, and you need a home inspector uh, to complete the, the transaction. Yeah. Because I believe it's a, it's a sound investment. It's a big investment. And I always tell clients, you don't want to cheap out on the thing that's going to help you understand what you own or what you're about to buy. 100%. That's, that's And just so you know, um, every client will receive a full digital report regarding all my findings, all my pictures, whether it be appliances, HVAC system, electrical, roofing. Um, so they have something to go back to over the years and monitor. See if something's changed from that last picture I took five years ago, mm -hmm. right? So at least they have a comparison, right? So that's really educational. good. That's really good. Joe, where can they find you on social media? Uh, they can find me at, uh, I think it's uh, Lighthouse Inspections underscore Joe. Uh, my cell number is 416-318-5815 or again, uh, through your local mortgage broker or your real estate agent. And on social, how do people know you? As uh, Home Inspector Joe. Awesome. Thank you. And you can find us obviously on our In Touch uh, socials at In Touch Mortgages. You can email, Google uh, us. We'd be more than happy to help you out and put you in touch with Joe if you have any questions. But we're going to sign off and we'll be back with Joe on the next episode. So we'll see you in just a bit.